Hey, Internet. What would you say to software that would automatically allow the Dreamcast to connect to the Internet and provide broadband Internet through the dial-up modem? Software that no matter how many times you disconnect or reconnect, it would automatically be ready. Software that could run on a Raspberry Pi. Not only this, but how about software that provided a web server that you could upload all your save files and then browse them on the Internet? or through the PC that you uploaded to. So then you could quickly transfer files between friends or allow you to look at stats about your save file so that you could see how far into the progress of a game you are. And that all of this could be installed on a single command line. And then, and then all this software would be open source so that anybody could use it and that the person who created the software, so perhaps me, uh, couldn't hold it over your heads so that you were dependent on me uh, in case you wanted to make modifications or use it in the future for other projects. Sound too good to be true? Well, this is the part of the video where I tell you what day it is. It's April Fool's Day, motherfucker. Take a look at the video. See when it was uploaded. Go ahead. How's it doing? Feel good? Good. Because this is the part of the video where I tell you, fuck April Fool's Day. It's my birthday. April Fool's Day is my birthday. I don't play these games. This software's real. So yeah, you can actually go download the software right now. You could just be like, hey, I'm not even going to listen to this guy talk anymore because he's bothering me and I don't like the way that he talks, which would really kind of hurt me. But anyway, uh, the link is in the description to my GitHub account. Uh, if you really do enjoy it or, you know, if you just appreciate what was done, it would be awesome if you would like star it so that if I talk to recruiters or, you know, people, um, hiring managers, that's a good one, uh, then they would be like, oh, hey, five people liked the thing he did. That's pretty solid. I would appreciate that. That's really all I want to get out of this. Let me uh, now explain to you what this software can do. Um, and there will be another video up that explains how to install it in case you are a total noob who doesn't understand command lines or is uncomfortable and just wants to know. Don't worry about it. That's why I'm making the video. So I've been working on this for about a year and a half now. Um, and I haven't really put a lot of effort into it in the past five months. And I was like, look, it's at a point where it's usable, but it's not like the end game that I want it to be at. However, um, the amount of things you can do with it make me think that a lot of people might be interested in using it. So I might not want to restrict people from trying it out or not being aware of it. Um, and then perhaps you would be interested enough to help develop it with me going forward. One of the things that really bothered me with uh, previous implementations of how to get your PC to a Linux server and get them connected online is that the setup process takes like 30 minutes to an hour. It can be really daunting for someone coming from the outside. So I wanted to create a bunch of scripts for you that takes care of all of that. But I wanted to go one step further and give you tools and um, capabilities beyond that by using a PHP Linux server. Because one of the issues when you're setting it up by yourself is that if your IP address changes or something along those lines, say a settings on your computer change, you're kind of screwed because you don't know exactly where in the process it got screwed up. I made it so that the entire script takes care of all of your settings for you. So in like five seconds, you have just updated everything. Um, so all you need to do if you run into an issue is really restart the script and it generally takes care of any of the issues I've run into. The time it takes me to power up my Dreamcast to connect to the server is longer than it takes for the script to start up and be ready to run. I have gotten this working on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, most of these scripts have been written for a Raspberry Pi. Uh, it works for Raspberry Pi 1 and 2. That's what I've tested on. Uh, and I would assume that it would work on for future versions. There might be some issues, but again, I'm making it open source so that it's easier for you to fix any issues if you run into them. Also, word of warning, if you look through this code, you're going to see that there's a lot of comments in there. Um, I kind of wanted it so that anyone who's coming into this who doesn't know bash scripting or coding in general could look through this and be like, oh, I see what's happening. I at least get a sense of what's going on. Um, also, I just learned sed and grepping piping for this project. So um, there might be some more efficient ways to do what I'm already doing. Uh, feel free to contribute if you're interested, but it works. And that's what's really the thing that was most important to me. One of the other things that I wanted was uh, setting it up so that we can spoof websites. So when the Dreamcast tries to connect to Sega.com, um, the Raspberry Pi can intercept that request and say, I'm, I'm Sega.com, I can take care of this for you. And then provide a standard uh, default header, like a default website that we can connect to and give you some capabilities. One of the big capabilities that I wanted to really focus on was allowing you to upload and download save files because to spend $12 for a megabyte of space is kind of insane. Uh, especially when you can get $12 can give you eight gigabytes. So not only is it allowing you to put the save file on the computer for you so that you can easily transfer it around to a friend, um, 
you are also saving cost in terms of how much save files you want to store over the years. The other big thing that the website does is a lot of people in the Dreamcast community know the VMS file is the one that's important. The VMI file is just header information. The VMI is important so that the Dreamcast can download the program. If you put the VMS files in the correct folder, it'll automatically generate all the accompanying VMI files if they don't exist uh, so that you have no worries just hold on to the VMS files and we'll take care of the rest for you. One of the things that's really kind of cool is documentation was one of the things that frustrated me the most. I couldn't figure out the documentation for a lot of these things. Fantasy Star Online screenshots, for example, have files saved a certain way. I broke down and documented how those files are put together. But one of the things that we can do with that is pull out statistical information from other files. Like with Shenmue, I set it up so that you can pull out the information. I figured out where um, the amount of money you have is stored, or the last time you saved is stored, or where it is in the game, or how many days you have left, things like that. And going forward, we can do things like a high scoreboard, or trying to um, reverse engineer some of the, the downloadable content to try to manipulate perhaps creating more things that are downloadable content now that we know, well, if we can figure out how this stuff actually works. The other thing I wanted was I wanted to be a little bit modular so that you can bring in website packs or friends, you guys can make your own websites uh, and bring in the information with it and then just put it in there and it will automatically take care of it so you can just pass the packs around. Say for example, you want to back up Sonic Adventure 2's website and easily have that being spoofed you can just connect your Dreamcast, uh, tell it to go to that site, and it will automatically be intercepted um, by the Raspberry Pi. One of my favorite games is Jet Grind Radio. Uh, so I made a temporary website as proof of concept. Some of the design might be a little uh, unappealing to certain people. Feel free to help me out trying to create some revamped design for it. Uh, one of the tricks is that the, Ras the Dreamcast can only go to HTML2. Um, so tables and coloring and styling, a lot of that you're going to see being done by PHP by me, um, just to make it easier and bearable. With Jet Grind Radio, I've set it up now so that you can connect in Jet Grind Radio and it'll take you to this website. Um, if you, again, include the pack when you do your installation. And every time you start the server, it'll look for new websites if they're there, but more of that in the installation section. Um, I'm providing three templates for the Jet Grind Radio images uh, of the three different sizes and a basic browsing utility so that it displays the website in a way that you can just throw images in a folder and I'll display them for you, like it automatically does that. Um, and then you can download them and put, start putting your own images in the game easily. One of the big things that I think is gonna be very useful is that you can send um, servers that it's trying to query towards certain destinations. So if you want someone to go from, you know, quake3.servswhatever.com, um, you can redirect that to an IP address of your choice. Uh, and you can set multiple different locations, different servers to a same token, and then you can forward that token to an IP address, which makes it really easy if you're saying, oh, I want all Quake 3 to go to this IP now, uh, so then Quake just gets redirected to look at certain things. Uh, same with Fantasy Star Online. I don't know all the IPs for the, the games. I tried looking them up. Um, I've tried to do my best. That documentation that I was able to find is in all the game's pages. Uh, but with your help, I think we can get a little bit more accurate. Um, and going forward, I think it's going to be a really powerful tool for getting it really streamlined to get someone back up and online. One of the major goals for this project for me was trying to get costs down because a broadband adapter for over $100 is insane when the only game you can really play is Browse the Web and Fantasy Star Online. Uh, so I wanted it so that more people could get the dial-up games because there's so many more dial-up games uh, and it seems so much harder to get on those dial-up games. So uh, let me explain to you the hardware I'm using, uh, show it off to you, and then you can get a sense of, um, is this even something you'd be interested in investing in if you don't already have some of these components? The Raspberry Pi is $35. The SD card for the Raspberry Pi is $10. The dial-up modem I have is $10. And then I got a phone splitter that's $4. What I'm using for the line voltage is a um, Magic Jack, which is about 20 bucks used. Uh, I, try, I, I bought two different versions to see if both would work so that I could try to help anybody for whatever. Thinking about phone cords, I'm kind of considering them not really have a cost, but they're around two bucks for all of the car cords you need, if you're willing to spend for used or from China. The biggest issue here is not the Dreamcast needing the line voltage, it's actually the modem that needs it. Um, the modem has a problem where it just there's no voltage in the line, so it can't read any of the signal that's coming through it. So I bought a magic jack, and which is why I have a phone splitter. So I plug the Dreamcast into the phone splitter, 
I, drew, I plugged the, the computer into the phone splitter and the Magic Jack into the phone splitter. One of the issues with Magic Jack is that it will provide a dial tone that can be kind of beneficial to certain games from what I remember, but uh, it does run into issues when you're trying to actually dial in because the Dreamcast is unable to provide a pulse that's loud enough to turn off the Magic Jack's dial tone. Uh, there's two ways around that that I found. Either you can plug in a phone to the splitter, press a button on the phone, that will generate a pulse that's loud enough to turn off the Magic Jack. Or, if you plug in the Magic Jack to another computer, you can set it in as a, a microphone, and then uh, start a new recording, say QuickTime or something, you go to new recording, new audio recording, select it as the microphone, uh, and when that happens, it'll turn off the dial tone. Problem with the Magic Jack is that it doesn't, it takes too much power for the Raspberry Pi to provide. So you can either do it through plugging it into an adapter for power or plugging it into another computer. One possible alternative, but I haven't been able to get it working consistently, so I would advise against it unless you're just gonna play around. But if you really wanna use it, I would advise against it. Um, it's a USB to RJ11 adapter. They're on eBay, they're like $1.50. So if we could get this working, it would be phenomenal. Um, I don't know if the Raspberry Pi couldn't provide the voltage or my other computer couldn't provide the voltage, but I did get it to provide enough voltage once or twice for dialing in, but I couldn't get it consistently. Um, and so I plugged in the USB to the computer and then the RJ11 to the splitter, and it seems to sometimes work. Problem is, listening to it on the phone, it's a very fuzzy signal, so I don't know if we need like a capacitor for it or um, some, some line filter to, to smooth out the signal that's coming through it. Uh, possible thing to look into in the future. I hate using 9 volt batteries for things because then the battery becomes some consumable and I'd rather not have that. But again, uh, this is a baseline and uh, hopefully would be able to improve from this point. So again, uh, link in the description to my GitHub. Uh, if you really do appreciate it, I would appreciate you starring it, but don't really worry about it. Again, I've kept the server from the website separate. Uh, and there is an install video that I will go through uh, how to get all this stuff for you or how you can get all this stuff. So there's a lot of information I'm breezing over right now because I want to keep this video short, but it's probably gonna be close to 10 minutes and I'm really sorry about that. Um, but I'm really excited. Also, if you want to like this video, I'm not going to complain. So I want to wish you a happy April Fool's Day. Uh, happy birthday to me. And uh, here's my gift to you guys. Hope you enjoy it.